Good morning. Let's pray together this morning. Father, we thank you so much for today. We thank you for the blessings you've given us. We thank you for the holidays. We were able to celebrate your son's birth. Lord, I pray that you'd bless those who got to be with their families and their loved ones. And Lord, I pray that those who couldn't for one reason or another, either illness or having to work or especially those that are on the front lines, uh, taking care of those that are sick in hospitals and around, the nurses and the doctors, especially during this time, pray that your blessing would be on them and your protection on them. God, I pray that as we look back on the year 2020 and all of its craziness, I pray that you'll help us to look forward to 2021, not knowing what's going to happen, not anticipating what's going to happen or what might not happen, but Lord, anticipating the hope that you bring to our lives and what that means for us as a good thing, that you are our hope, you are our salvation, and we pray that you would bless us as we begin this new year in the next couple of weeks. And Lord, I pray that your blessing on us this morning as we worship you. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending bring from above Echoes of mercy, whispers of love This is my story, this is my song Praising my Savior all the day long This is my story, this is my song Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. Filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. You know, this morning we're going to look back on the year 2020 and look at the year 2021 with anticipation of the hope that we have in Christ. And when I think of my past and when I think of my future, I think of this song that I wrote a few years ago and quite a few years ago now, but uh, many of you have probably heard it, but it's a testimony song for me called Thank You For My Life. When I ride out on the morning and the sun begins to rise I face the starting of another day When the sunlight breaks the chill and lights the cap rock and the hills It's the time I feel most comfort when I pray And I pray, Lord, thank you for the life that I've been given 
that I love so much that love me in return. Oh Lord, help me not to stray. Make me holy in your eyes. Oh Lord, thank you for my life. Riches of this life could never pass what I've been given With my wife and my children by my side So believe me when I say that when I bow my head to pray I'll be thankful we have Jesus in our lives And I pray, Lord, thank you for the life that I've been given that I love so much that love me in return. Oh Lord, help me not to stray. Make me holy in your eyes. Oh Lord, thank you for my life. So remember when Look upon the life that you've been given And the comfort that God's blessing can afford And even when the trials of life are hard And you feel broken Remember to lay your cares upon the Lord Lord, lead me on the narrow way As I travel day to day Help me remember to see Oh Lord, thank you for the life that I've been given The people that I love so much that love me in return Oh Lord, help me not to stray Make me holy in your eyes Oh Lord, thank you for my life Oh Lord, help me not to stray Make me holy in your eyes, oh Lord, thank you for my The gentle healer came into our town today. He touched blind eyes and their darkness left to stay. But more than the blindness, he took their sins away. The gentle healer came into our town today. The gentle healer came into our town today. He spoke one word, and that was all he had to say. And the one who had died just rose up straight away. The gentle healer came into our town today. Oh, he seemed like just an ordinary man. With dirty feet and rough but gentle hands But the words he says are hard to understand And yet he seems like such an ordinary man The gentle healer he left our town today. I just looked around and found he'd gone away. 
Some folks from town who follow him, they say that the gentle healer is the truth, the life, the way. Turn with me, if you would, beginning today to the book of Jeremiah. We're going to be looking at a couple of passages there before we move on and move to some other things that we will cover later on down in the, in the Word of God. But we're going to begin in, in Jeremiah chapter 14. You know, we're talking about uh, the year 2020. Everybody probably agrees that it has been an adventure at best and a catastrophe at worst. Uh, there have been a whole lot of people who have lost their loved ones this year, more so than maybe typical. They say this is the deadliest year in, in American history. Three-something million people died this year. Uh, 330 million people in the country. I didn't think 300 million sounded like a, or 3 million sounded like a terrible high amount of people that had died, but uh, this is the most we've ever had die in one year. Not everybody died of COVID, obviously. We've got about 300,000 of those. I think at this point, somewhere around there, and uh, that's including a whole lot of other conditions that were complicated because of the virus, not somebody just getting the virus and dying, but other other issues, other complications that have caused all of that. And I have become uh, painfully aware through dear friends of mine, um, people that we know who are doctors and nurses, that um, the stress, the, the traumatic stress uh, that is going on in their lives, seeing people die is very difficult. It's very hard. And uh, some cases where um, the family or the individual has requested that every means possible be used to keep them alive, and, and that means even when there is absolutely no hope, uh, the person is probably already gone, actually, but the ventilator is working for them. Uh, the healthcare workers agonize through that because they know what's really best for that person. And sometimes when we're in that situation, we don't we don't think too clearly. We think what we want, and sometimes it's not what's best for the patient, our loved one, because we don't want to lose them. But those are all terrible, terrible issues we've dealt with this year, and we will probably continue to deal with on some level. Um, especially those that I'm talking about, the doctors and nurses. We need to keep them in our prayers. I know that all of you know nurses and doctors, doctors, uh, aides, um, physicians' assistants, nurse practitioners, all of these, EMTs even, um, and the first responders to accidents, uh, having to deal with so many more issues. And so we need to be in prayer for them. But I want us to look at the things that we place our hope in today uh, and, and pray that we can find our hope in Jesus Christ. I know we can, but we have to go looking for it. It doesn't just happen. You have to seek him. God's word says you will find me when you seek me with your entire heart, with your whole heart, you will find me. And so we need to seek God out. In uh, Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 22, it says, Are there any among the false gods of the nations that can bring rain? Or can the heavens give showers? Are you not he, O Lord our God? We set our hope on you, for you do all of these things. You know, when, when we uh, read in the Bible about other gods and God even said, don't ever have any other gods before me. You've probably heard me say this before if you've listened very much. That that's almost a silly thing to even say because there are no other gods. We, we put things in a place where we worship them, sure, but they're not gods. There is no such thing as gods. Uh, we can make false gods, as it says here, but they're not gods. They are false gods because God is the only God. And we, put our pla we place our hope, it says, on him. We rest it on him. Um, in Jeremiah 17, 
verse 13, it speaks again about our hope. O Lord, the hope of Israel, all who forsake you shall be put to shame. Those who turn away from you shall be written in the earth, for they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living water. And then, probably one of the most notable passages in Jeremiah, sometimes used out of context, sometimes used as I spoke a couple of weeks ago, it's not meant to be our genie in a lamp verse for God because God does what God wants to do. God does what his plan is, not our plan. He doesn't just bless whatever we feel like doing. He blesses us when we do what he wants us to do. Okay, It says this, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. What is the hope that God gives us? It is Jesus. We talked about last week in the story about the angels um, in Luke chapter uh, 2. We found that passage about uh, the angels speaking to the shepherds. And it says this, that they were... Um, let me get to the right page. I saw the highlight and I jumped to it and that wasn't it. It says that the angel spoke, it said, this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. They said, the kingdom of God is at hand. In the city of David, you will find a Savior who is Christ the Lord. That's the hope that God gave us. He always held out hope for the children of Israel that the Messiah would come, and they kept holding on to that hope. And then when he did come, they didn't catch it. They didn't understand it. They didn't receive it. But these shepherds went out and told everyone, as we talked about last week, you know, God has called us to a relationship with him. And the relationship with him comes one way. And that's through Jesus. When we look back on 2020 and we see the, the devastation, we see the tough times, we really have to go back a little bit to the end of 2019. Now, I'm not, listen, I, I don't want anybody to get an idea. that I, I'm, I'm going to try not to be political in this message today because it's not a political message it's a message that we have struggled through this last year and we are going to struggle through some other things in the future but we have to trust in Jesus and so but to get a picture of this whole thing we got to go back and these are these are not my little uh commentaries or opining this is dates and facts of what happened between the end of 2019 and now we know now, uh, not even something that is questioned at this point by anybody. This is fact. Sometime early in November, if not sooner than that, um, at a laboratory in Wuhan, China, where, frankly, uh, internationally illegal scientific practices were taking place. I'm not saying it's the only place in the world that takes place. <laughs> There's probably a lot of places where this stuff's taking place. But viruses were being doctored and engineered and um, experimented with for no other explainable reason but biological warfare. And biological warfare is internationally illeg illegal according to the Geneva Convention, according to the United Nations and every civilized nation on the planet uh, that is honest, uh, those things are illegal. And yet that's what they were doing at the uh, laboratory in Wuhan, China. It somehow got loose. It somehow got let out, either on purpose or by accident. One way or another, we don't know that for sure. But in early November, when that was detected, when that was known to be a problem, 
China, the Communist Party of China, covered it up. They lied about it. They covered it up. They immediately shut off any travel from Wuhan to anywhere else in China, but they allowed travel everywhere else in the world. So this virus that was obviously much worse than anyone thought it would be traveled around the world. We know that to be true now. In December, we know that the World Health Organization found out about it. But did they warn the world? No, they didn't warn the world. They kept it quiet. They got in cahoots with China and lied about it for another month or so and kept it under wraps. It helped cover it up uh, because it was already spreading to the rest of the world and it was already becoming a bad problem. I know people that think they got it, may have had it, the end of last year, not in January, February, March when we started seeing it in this country and knew what it was, but earlier even. So it may have even come here sooner than that. In January, on January the 31st, the president banned travel from China because of the growing uh, threat of this virus coming from China. As late as March, almost two months later, a month and a half later, there are those that were still saying he was alarmist, he was a racist, he was a xenophobe, which means you're scared of anybody from other countries coming to your country, and yet he acted quicker than anybody else did to stop the virus. That's a fact. March 18th, there was a call for shelter in place. Businesses, churches, schools, and virtually the world economy shut down almost completely until the end of May. By the end of May, there had been 103,000 deaths. So shutdowns, masks, and all the things that we do did not seem to curtail it. It just kept growing. Graduations were canceled. People were unable to see loved ones in nursing homes and hospitals or even in their own homes. And thousands of them died, not even able to have a normal funeral or a burial. May the 25th, as if all of that wasn't chaos enough. On May the 25th, George Floyd died while being arrested by police officers in Minneapolis, Minnesota. That is just the first of several similar instances that led to protest and then to riots. The burning of federal buildings, shooting of police officers in many other cities, and the takeover of several city blocks and government buildings and police stations in cities like Portland and Seattle ensued. Those things began to take center stage in the news feed all across our country. And so we have been dealing with those things as well as a virus. Causing a seamlessly hopeless situation. You know, uncertainty has continued to be rampant because of all of that. Uh, June saw some limited openings still and confusion about protocols concerning social distancing and mask and death rates uh, being unclear, uh, testing, etc. facts given by experts that changed every day seemingly along with plenty of criticism from everyone who became a self-proclaimed expert <laughs> after checking out their Facebook feed. That's when a lot of people became experts is that they, they began to read on Facebook uh, all the facts that, that are found to be not facts necessarily. So far, uh, far be it from me to decide whether something I hear on Facebook is a fact or not. I really like to check things out before I pass on any information, whether it's from Facebook or anywhere else. But fall coming on us, did very little to change as the chaos continued concerning the election, concerning school openings and then closings, uh, virtual and in-person. Uh, teachers were thrown into chaotic situations, having to deal with how they were going to teach kids uh, in class, out of class, in virtual or, or, or otherwise. Homeschool became a common thing, uh, even among those who had never homeschooled before. Um, 
even during this time, God was still working. God knew all of this was going to happen. Uncertainty, as we come to the end of 2020, uh, continues to be rampant. Depression is at an all-time high, as is the suicide rate and the suicide attempt rate, which is astronomical. I know one man who is a counselor uh, specializing in PTSD among veterans, and just among his clientele, and he works closely with the VA and he works with other agencies, so it's not just his office and it's not just one group of people, it's a large group of people he deals with. Uh, at the end of October, their numbers of suicide attempts among his clients was five times what it is in a normal year. The spiking of domestic abuse and drug abuse, children's neglect or abuse, has gone straight through the roof over the depression, the anxiety, the shutdowns, all of the things that we have dealt with in this year. But in this seemingly hopeless situation to many people, God knew all of this was going to happen. Now, before you get angry and say, if God knew it, why didn't he stop it? You need to remember, we got to go back to the fall of man, which was not just the fall of man, but it was the fall of everything. When sin came into this world, everything fell. Everything became altered. Everything became changed for the worse. Nothing is as God intended for it to be. So the only thing good that ever happens in this world is because of the sovereignty of God. Because he allows good and he allows evil depending on what happens because of the sin in this world. But God redeems all that he allows. He allows things to happen because of the consequences of our sin and because that's what happens in a fallen world. But then he is always coming behind picking up the pieces, redeeming that which he allows. And that's what he has been doing all along. So you can't say, well, I'm mad at God because he did this or he let this happen. Let me tell you something. From the very beginning, when God threw de the devil out of heaven for his pride and his ego and his jealousy of wanting to be God, the devil has hated God. And then when God made us in his image, he said to Jesus, the others who were there, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, they were all there in the beginning. When he said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, he created him. When that happened, the devil began a vendetta against us. He hates us. He hates the creation. He hates everything that he doesn't have control over. And because there's sin in this world, he has some control over the circumstances he only has control over us, that which we give him. But he has control over the environment and over the circumstances that we live in. And so he throws these terrible things at us. Famine, pestilence, terrible weather conditions, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, tornadoes, hurricanes. All of those things are here because it is a fallen creation. We are fallen man, so we react badly at those things. We become desperate, and when we become desperate, we make bad choices, and when we make bad choices, we become desperate. And it is a vicious circle. And so when people die of a terrible pandemic, it is not God to get mad at. It's the devil to get mad at because he is the one with the vendetta against us. God loves us. If he didn't love us, we wouldn't be here. If God did not love us, he would have destroyed us long ago. But it is because his love for us, God's word tells us, he showed his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Before evil people built a lab in Wuhan, China, for the very purpose of developing biological agents to be used as bioterrorist weapons. God knew they were doing it. Before it turned into a pandemic that shut down the world and killed millions, God knew. 
before the election turned into yet another divisive situation for our nation, God knew. And he always has had a plan to redeem it all. If we trust him, if we place our hope on him. So, how do we then live? I read a book several years ago. It's a very complicated book. It's like a textbook. It's really dry, hard reading, very hard reading. It's a good book, but it's very difficult, academic in nature. And it's called How Should We Then Live by Dr. Francis Schaeffer, who is a philosopher and a theologian. He, uh, he wrote this book that said, How Should We Then Live? And it was a, it was a uh, covering of the history of faith and religion in Christianity throughout the world. And in light of all of the things that have gone on in our world, in light of all the things that we have gone through as Christians, how should we then live? And we look at that question over and over and over again, those of us who believe in Jesus Christ. How should we then live? I see what's going on in this country. How do we live? How do we live in light of that? How do we deal with that as Christians? When sin came into the world, as I said, everything, everything fell. I want to read to you a verse here in, in Romans chapter 8 that reiterates that. Um, Romans 8 is a great, great chapter. I, I've told you before and I'll, I'll tell you again, you need, you need to read Romans 8. You need, all, need to read all of Romans. Romans is a great, uh, great book. But in Romans 8, uh, beginning in verse 22 and going through verse 25, it says, For we know now that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. That which we know is coming. We know it's coming. We don't see it. We can't grasp it. But we know it's coming. That's the things we place our hope in. Jesus was always the plan to redeem that which God had allowed by man's choice of wrong over right, evil over good, sin over fellowship with God. Therefore, He, Jesus, is our hope. He is our only hope. See, the problem is we've been putting our hope in the wrong things. Jobs, money, relatives, family, friends fun, alcohol, drugs, wealth, success. You know, these guys that we keep hearing, we should listen to these experts. They're not experts after all. They don't know any more than you or I do about a lot of this. They just have a piece of paper hanging on a wall. And by a gentleman's agreement, we have decided that makes them an expert. But they change their story every day. You know why? Because they don't have the answers. Listen, in their defense, they're looking for the answers. They're trying. They're working hard. They're not just blooming idiots. They're smart guys. But they're not experts. Nobody is an expert on the coronavirus. Nobody. It changes too often. It's working too hard in its little world to destroy. And some of those people are trying their best and they're working their hardest day after day after day to try to find the answers, but they can't find the answers. Experts are only experts if they have mastered something and they've not mastered anything with COVID. We can't put our trust and our hope in those that are supposed to be keeping us informed. The news media in this country 
is a joke. ABC, CBS, NBC, CNN, MSNBC, Fox, NPR, and others have all lied to us. You can find it in records. Every single one of them, without fail, has been caught at one time or another, many times, some of them, lying to us. Dozens of their employees have been used as scapegoats and been fired because they reported the lie for sensationalism. After a while, can you, can you continue to trust these people who lie and lie and lie? We can't put hope in them, that's for sure. There's no hope there. Let me tell you something. Cheaters cheat. Liars lie. Swindlers swindle. And they all think that everybody else cheats, lies, and swindles because that's all they know and understand. Liars are always going to lie to you and they think everybody lies so they don't see anything wrong with lying. In fact, there are some people in the media that would rather lie to you than tell you the truth even if the truth would benefit them because they are so used to lying that they can't help it. We cannot put our hope in them. We can't put our hope in politicians. Same as them. Same as the media. How many politicians do you know that have kept their promises? Well, they got a lot of things to deal with once they get up there in Washington. You know, some people just don't know how Washington works. How Washington works is what's got us in this mess. We can't trust those people. They're not trustworthy. They have proven themselves Many of them to be liars, some of them to be criminals who have gone unpunished. They get some kind of a free pass because they are some elected official and they end up getting a little slap on the hand by their buddies up there and then they just go on making legislation. Congressmen and senators who have lied and said they served in Vietnam and they didn't. Do you know that's a, that's a criminal offense? Do you know that if I put on some kind of uniform or I put on some cap that says I'm a Vietnam veteran and I go around and I start telling everybody that I'm a Vietnam veteran and use that on a resume and stuff like that, I can go to jail? We got people in Congress who have done that. Nothing's happened to them. You can't trust those people. Promises have never been kept by some of them. Our tax dollars are spent on ungodly things without our consent, and with no concern or remorse on their part. Entire groups, entire party saying, we're going to go up there this time, you elect us, you put us in office, we're going to go up there, we're going to do this. And they didn't do it. Another guy gets elected in that same party and he gets elected to go deal with something. He gets up there and the rest of his own party stab him in the back. You can't trust those people. And we've placed our hope in these things foolishly. That's our fault. Sometimes even our religious leaders have become untrustworthy. Sometimes we have put our trust in men who are leaders because, and they have failed us because they were more about the religion or the denomination than they were about God. They have put all of their eggs in the basket of religion. Now, let me tell you something. I've said this before, and I will continue to say this. I've had arguments with some of my theologian friends about this. Religion is not a God thing. It's just not. Religion is us trying to get to God on our terms. We make the rules. We make the parameters. We make the consequences for getting outside of those parameters and those rules. And we decide the punishment. Many times based in tradition, not scripture. God doesn't want religion. 
God wants a relationship with us. He didn't create us that we might have religion. He created us that we would have a relationship with him through Jesus Christ. And he said Jesus Christ was the way to get to him. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Jesus said that. We've dealt with that before. He's either a, the, a liar, a lunatic, or he really is the Lord who he says he is. He wants a relationship with us. Not for us to be bound in religion or in these other things with our hope. We can't put our hope in anything that is of man anymore. We just, we can't. We've got to stop doing it. It has fooled us too many times. You ever heard the saying, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Well, shame on us because we keep letting these people in the media lie to us and get away with it. We keep letting politicians lie to us and, we, and they get away with it. We keep putting our hope and our trust in them. You know, Will Rogers said something I think is funny. He said, you got to quit voting for these politicians. You'll just encourage them. <laughs> Isn't that true? What we need to do is clean them out. We need to stop voting for the ones that have been up there for a long time. And, and, and I, I'm not sure that it matters who's running against them. I'm saying we vote for somebody new and give them a shot. Because the morons that are up there are not doing a good job. They never have, obviously. Look at the mess we're in. And we send them up there to fix it, and they just make it worse. And they don't listen to you or me. They do what they want to do. They lie to us and tell us that they're going to do what we want to get our vote. And then they get up there and they do whatever they want to do. That's the mess we're in in 2020. 2020 is a textbook example of that. All right? The chaos of man and how we keep trying to fix it by man-made things instead of trusting God. Isaiah 42. It says this, Isaiah 42, 1 through 3, verses 1 through 3. Behold my servant whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him, and he will bring forth justice or hope to the nations. That's speaking of Jesus. That's prophecy about Jesus. Matthew 12, 18 says this. Eighteen and following through verse 21, it says this Behold, this is a reference back to that Isaiah passage by uh, those that were preparing the way for Jesus Christ. And when Jesus uh, had healed a man and he was in the temple and he spoke what he spoke, it says it was fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah when Isaiah said this, Behold my servant who am I have chosen, my beloved with whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him and he will proclaim justice to the Gentiles. He will not quarrel or cry aloud, nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not quench until he brings justice to victory. And in his name, the Gentiles will have hope. Those that were not the Jews, us, us, will have hope. In Jesus. Romans 5. Verse 1 through 11 says this. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. 
For while we were still weak at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were re reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Many would say that the future has no hope. I'm not always a glass half full kind of person. <laughs> but the future with Christ always has hope. See, Christ is there to rescue us. He has always been called, in God's word, the good shepherd. And in Psalm 23, it says, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, Jesus, the good shepherd. Thou art with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And he prepares a table for us to sit down and dine at leisure in the presence of our enemies. 2020 has been crazy. It's been hard. But Jesus Christ knows that. He knows what we've been through and he knows what is coming even though we don't. Trust him. He may not take away your troubles, but he will help you get through them. I pray for people who are deathly ill and I say, God, selfishly, I want them healed. I'm asking you to heal them. But just as Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, not my will, but yours be done, God. So it's not a hope that it says, oh, well, I hope that happens. It is a hope, which is an assurance that through Christ it will. I don't know where you stand today. I don't know where you are in your life if you're listening this morning. But Jesus Christ wants to offer you hope. He wants to offer you hope through him, his salvation. And it comes by confessing with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believing in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You can do that today. You just say, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know I'm wrong. I know I've done things wrong. I know that I was born in sin like everybody is. I know that apart from you, I have no hope. And I know I can't save myself. And so I'm asking you to come into my heart and save me. Forgive me of my sins. Live in my heart through your Holy Spirit. Guide my paths, which is what his word says he'll do. Lord, thank you for saving me. That simple prayer, just, just talking to God, admitting to him that you know you're without hope apart from Jesus Christ, that he is Lord. Believe it in your heart and you will be saved. If you're here this morning and you know the Lord is your Savior, you've asked Him to come into your heart, forgive you of your sins, but you've become, listen, like me, beat down. This year's been tough. This year's been hard, depressing. Um, we need to lay that before the Lord. We need to surrender it to Him, our hope and our salvation. That's what He is for all of us, for all the world. So as we come to the end of 2020, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on our own understanding. In all of our ways, acknowledge Him and who He is. That doesn't mean acknowledge Him. Hey, He's there. But acknowledge Him, what that means, who He is, what He is. And He will direct our paths. He will make our paths straight. You can do that today.
by surrendering to him. I want to encourage you to get in touch with us if you have any questions or if you need prayer for any reason. I would also ask you, if you're watching today, we'd like to know who all's watching. And if you're watching, we're not going to bother you. We're not going to call you. We're not going to contact you in any way. But every week, there's a lot of views and only a few likes. And, and I, I don't really care about having a lot of likes and comments on the post that I put. I'm really not after that. I, I'm just sharing with you when I post things. But it would help us to know an idea about how wide the scope is of this broadcast every week. And so if you're watching today and you like uh, watching this week after week, I, I hear people all the time say, watch you every Sunday, but um, I, I didn't know. And, and so I would, I would ask that you would click like on Facebook there. And if you do comment, um, and if you've never commented before, just just tell us where you live or who you are. Some of your some of our folks that are watching are, are friends of ours. Many of them are, but uh, I get contacted every week by somebody I don't know very well, but they've been watching. So if you just click the like thing, we'll know you're watching, and we'll know how many of those views are legit. How many of them just started running as you went folding through your Facebook place? All right. We want to know who you are so that we can pray for you, so that we can be there for you. Please contact us. You can go to jeffgore.org and everything you need to know about how to get hold of us or to uh, be involved in our ministry one way or the other is all right there. Um, email, post office box, phone numbers, all the information you need to know to get hold of us is right there. Pray for us as we continue to go. And I hope that you'll be with us next Sunday when I bring to you my State of the Union may not mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. It won't matter to most people. But this year, we come upon a time in January where the president always gives his State of the Union address or how we stand right now. I want to give you my State of the Union as we begin a brand new year, January, next week. Can you believe it? 2020 is over. 2021 is beginning. And we pray it'll be a better one. Pray that this will be a great week for you. Hope that you'll come back and join us next week. It'll be January the 3rd, I guess, uh, 10 o'clock Central Time. Hope that you'll be with us then. And we know that uh, we're going to enjoy being with you. And so January the 3rd, 10 a.m. Central, right here on Facebook. We hope that you'll join us. God loves you and we love you. As we end the year 2020, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Thank you.